Okay, it's, uh, it's quite common in uh, books on chemical kinetics and books on uh, reaction engineering even uh, to see uh, reaction rates equated to derivatives of concentration with respect to time. Uh, this is a very special case, and one of the first things that I want to do in these notes is to dispel uh, that as a definition of the reaction rate. So actually, a reaction rate is a property of a mixture uh, that contains reactive components. Uh, the reaction rate depends on the concentrations and temperatures of those species, just like the diffusivity and the thermal conductivity. Uh, we cannot just automatically equate reaction rates to derivatives of concentration with respect to time, because it is certainly possible, and in fact common in practice, to see uh, reactors run at steady state conditions where nothing is changing with respect to time, and yet a reaction is still occurring. So, uh, how do we resolve this? Uh, this little point of confusion uh, in mass transfer, you will learn very soon uh, in, your, in your chemical engineering courses, uh, you will learn something called the species balance equation, uh, where we write down that the rate of accumulation of species I uh, is a derivative of, that, of the concentration of that species with respect to time, uh, and that is equal to uh, when you add it to the sort of material derivative, this is the velocity dotted into the gradient and the concentration of that species with respect to spatial position, uh, that's equal to the diffu diffusion term, so this is a diffusivity times the Laplacian of the concentration, plus the rate at which that species I is being generated per unit volume in the, in the bulk. Okay, so this is a, a partial differential equation that governs all of the contributions that, that uh, determine whether a species is increasing or decreasing in concentration. And the generation term is particularly important. That is effectively our reaction term. It is the volumetric generation rate of species I. Uh, so when we say rate, we refer to per time. When we say volumetric, we say per, per unit volume. So the rate, by definition then, uh, in this case is a number of moles per unit volume per unit time. And there are some important special cases. Uh, in a batch reactor at constant volume, we have no inflow and no outflow. Usually we're going to assume that these batch reactors are well stirred. That is to say that there are no concentration gradients in the reactor. This is very common in use in bench scale lab experiments or for actually production of high value drugs and things that you only need small quantities of. Uh, the, the rate equation now, when you have no concentration gradients, you can, sorry about that, I pressed the wrong button on my mouse. Uh, so if we go back to the species balance equation and we get rid of all the terms that involve gradients in the concentration, you see that you indeed do just have that the, the reaction rate is equal to the derivative of the concentration with respect to time. Okay, so that I think, this viewpoint that, that reactors look like this is what gives rise to, uh, to this uh, somewhat overused identification of reaction rates as being derivatives of concentrations with respect to time. Okay, but there are many other cases where that's not the case. Consider, for example, uh, one of the ideal reactors that chemical engineers use all the time. That is a plug flow reactor uh, where you have some velocity uh, of an inlet stream carrying some concentration of, of inlet uh, species, and then you have a velocity leaving this, uh, this plug flow reactor carrying some outlet concentrations of those species. Uh, it is a, uh, again, an idealized model. Uh, diffusion in the radial direction is ignored, and diffusion in the uh, axial direction is ignored. That means that the derivatives with respect to the with respect to R and with, with respect to Z can both be ignored as can derivatives of the velocity with respect to those variables. So when we operate this at steady state, uh, we find that the only term that's left out of the, um, out of the terms in the species balance equation above uh, are derivatives with respect to position down the reactor of the concentration of the inlet species times the volumetric flow rate, and that is equal to the uh, the reaction rate. Okay, so so this now is saying that the rate at which I is being generated in a given slice of this reactor is related to the change in the amount of stuff flowing uh, just to the left in the inlet of that little slice 
and what's flowing out to the right. Okay, so it's just a in minus out equals equals generation kind of balance, and this is entirely at steady state. Uh, so this is commonly written in terms of the derivative of the molar flow rate with respect to volume uh, for these. Where, where we count volume moving down the reactor in this direction along the axial uh, coordinate is equal to the reaction rate for species I. Okay, so uh, there are some notational conventions to take note of. We will do a lot more in these reactor design equations later in the course, uh, but, uh, but you can already see in this that we have to think carefully about units. Uh, this quantity is moles per meter squared per second, whereas this Fi is moles per second. Okay, so another uh, example where things look a little different uh, is the continuous stirred tank reactor. Uh, so this, in this reactor we assume that everything is well stirred so we have no concentration gradients. Again we have a steady state operation and we have some flow of reactants in uh, at some velocity or volumetric flow rate Vn uh, and and we have some flow of reactants out uh, at some new volumetric flow rate and new outlet composition. So in this reactor, if it's well stirred, then what's flowing out is the same as what's in the reactor everywhere. And what's flowing in effectively gets instantaneously mixed into the reactor. And we might as well think about this as being uniformly dispersed uh, uh, injection throughout the reactor all at the initial time. Uh, or not at the initial time, but at the inlet, the inlet is effectively everywhere contributing some amount uh, to the uh, reactor contents. Okay, so, so we have an inlet flow and we have a amount of stuff being generated that is the integral over the volume times the reaction, reaction rate, uh, that is the rate of generation of species I, and then that all contributes to a flow out. Okay, so the control volume here is around the whole reactor contents with these two streams flowing in and out, and this is our balance equation for a uh, continuous stirred tank reactor. When you do this integration, uh, you find that if everything is well stirred, then this reaction rate is the same everywhere, and we just multiply the volume of the reactor by the reaction rate, and we get that that must be equal to the flow at the outlet minus the flow at the inlet of species I. Okay, so there are also Oh, I did it again. I uh, apologize for this. Okay, there are also cases uh, where we don't have a reaction occurring in the volumetric bulk. Instead, we might have a reaction happening on a surface. Uh, in those cases, we will actually express the reaction rate as the number of moles being uh, produced per area per time. Uh, there are many examples of these in catalysis and in surface science. For example, if I look at CO oxidation on platinum, uh, that involves multiple steps and multiple surface intermediates. Uh, a little abbreviated picture of what is happening in that reaction is shown here. I have two gas phase species that come down, they attach to the surface uh, in a process called adsorption, uh, and, and in this case, chemisorption, where this thing is really breaking a bond in the process of adsorbing. Uh, that allows the, the molecule to move around on the surface until it finds a carbon monoxide molecule and then they can react, form CO2, desorb from the surface. And, and so the, the reaction looks like you started with these gas phase species and ended up with a new gas phase species. But actually it only happens in the presence of this catalyst and, and uh, well at least it, at low temperatures it would only happen in the presence of the catalyst. And, and so that's really why we go ahead and write the reaction rate in terms of uh, an amount of reaction per area per time. Sometimes a reaction might occur on very specific sites or atoms uh, on a surface. Uh, in that case, we would express the rate as the number of moles of reaction occurring per special site per time. Uh, so, so an example of this type of reaction rate is something called a turnover frequency, where people count the number of sites that you have and the amount of reaction that's occurring, and they write it down as the number of times that the, the reaction turns over, that is the catalytic cycle repeats itself, uh, per time per site. Okay, so as always in engineering, it's important to report rates, rates and all quantities with the appropriate units. So by, by reporting things uh, per volume, per time, 
when that's appropriate, or per surface area per time, or per site per time, we facilitate the design and scale up and reproducibility of, of, our, of our models and our quantities that we report in the literature. Okay, so here's an example. Uh, if you take a fluidized bed reactor, it contains a catalyst. The catalyst is depicted as these little pellets, and these little particles are, are in an updraft of, uh, of some gaseous reactant mixture, and, uh, and they sort of are constantly entrained. Now, I could look at this reactor and say that there's an amount of products being made, and the reactor has some volume V, and I could report the reaction rate as moles per volume per time being made in this reactor. But that really wouldn't help me very much because I know that the reaction is only happening on the surface of this catalyst, and so it would make a lot more sense to define the reaction rate as moles per gram of catalyst per time, or moles per surface area of catalyst per time, or perhaps moles per catalyst site per time. Uh, so all of those things would be reasonable, but moles per volume per time really doesn't make much sense. If I, if I increase the flow rate of this, and I would effectively uh, would I would effectively extend the, the region of the bed that's fluidized and, and that would appear to change the rate, but it, but it doesn't really. Uh, so let me go ahead and stop here, and next time we will talk about elementary reactions.